Last night we bought a new television at the PX. You can't beat those prices. Welcome to class, soldier. Hey. Get down from there, soldier. Let's get started. Throughout history, soldiers have been helping their injured buddies, and you will be no exception. If you see a wounded soldier, your first action is to help that buddy. Being here today shows that all of you have the desire to help, but the question is, do you know how? What we will attempt to do is give you an appreciation for the significance of prompt, effective first aid, and the basic proficiency in the application of critical first aid skills. Performing first aid on a fellow human being is one of the purest examples of living up to the Army Corps values. It is our duty to learn first aid and our duty to provide first aid to others. Whenever we give first aid to any other person, you're being loyal to other members of your unit, fulfilling your obligation to other soldiers, and showing those people the same respect you would expect from them. In many cases, you will be risking your own life in a selfless way to provide first aid. You are doing what's right and showing personal courage, both physically and morally. By performing first aid, we are living up to the Army value of honor, because saving a human life brings honor to yourselves and to the United States Army. It is important that you treat injuries in the order in which they are most life-threatening. During this lesson, you will learn how to evaluate a casualty for breathing difficulties and decide in which order to give first aid measures. In this and in future lessons, we will be teaching you the signs and symptoms for evaluating and treating a casualty according to the priorities needed to prevent death, control shock, and lessen further injuries. Our first step is to ascertain that our buddy is in fact a casualty. We do this in a procedure called shake and shout, where we first ask in a loud but calm voice, are you okay? Then we gently shake or tap the casualty on the shoulder. Watch for a response. A conscious casualty may be asked where his body feels different than usual or where it hurts. If the casualty does not respond, assume mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation is needed. Call for help and begin resuscitation procedures. If you or the casualty thinks that they may have hurt their neck or back, do not move them unless it is absolutely necessary to save their life. If the casualty is conscious but is choking or cannot talk, stop the evaluation and begin first aid immediately. When it is safe to do so, lay the casualty on their back and open the airway with the appropriate maneuver. This action alone may start the casualty breathing again on their own. All living things must have oxygen to live, and it is through the breathing process that the lungs draw oxygen from the air and put it into the blood for the heart to pump through the body where it is then used. Without this oxygen, cells in the brain and nervous system may die after four to six minutes. This lack of oxygen may mean irreversible brain damage because these dead cells can never be replaced. The method to open the airway on a casualty with no suspected head or neck injury is the head tilt, chin lift method. Since the tongue is the single most common cause of an airway obstruction, the airway in most cases can be cleared by simply extending the neck. This action pulls the tongue away from the air passage in the throat. This procedure again is called the head tilt, chin lift method. To perform this life-saving procedure, kneel at the level of the casualty's shoulders. Place one hand on the casualty's forehead and apply firm, backward pressure with the palm to tilt the head back. Place the fingertips of the other hand under the bony part of the lower jaw and lift, bringing the chin forward. Please note, do not use your thumb to lift and do not press deeply into the soft tissue under the chin with your fingers. Any foreign material that you see should be removed as soon as possible. For casualties that may have sustained significant head or neck injuries, we use a procedure called the jaw thrust. Kneel behind the casualty's head and rest your elbows on the surface on which the casualty is lying. Place one hand on each side of the casualty's head and grasp the angles of the lower jaw with your fingertips. Place your thumbs on the jaw just below the level of the teeth. Lift with both hands to move the jaw forward and upward. This action will also cause the casualty's head to tilt back somewhat. Keep the head and neck from moving more than necessary. If the casualty's lips are still closed after the jaw has been moved forward, Use your thumbs to retract the lower lip and allow air to enter the casualty's mouth. Next, check to see if the casualty is breathing by using the look, listen, and feel method. Place your ear over the casualty's mouth and nose with your face toward the casualty's chest and look for the rise and fall of the casualty's chest. Listen 
for breathing, and simultaneously feel for breath on your ear and cheek. If casualty is not breathing, immediately call for medical help and continue with your first aid. If the casualty does not spontaneously start breathing when you open their airway, you will need to provide what we call rescue breaths. If you are using the head tilt chin lift method, use the thumb and index finger of your hand on the casualty's forehead to gently pinch the casualty's nostrils closed. If you are using the jaw thrust, close the casualty's nostrils by placing your cheek tightly against the nose. Administer two full breaths by opening your mouth wide and taking a deep breath. Place your mouth over the casualty's mouth. Make sure that your mouth forms a good seal so that air will not escape when you blow into the casualty's mouth. Maintaining the open airway will keep the casualty's mouth open slightly. Blow a breath into the casualty's mouth. As you blow, observe the casualty's chest. If air is getting into the casualty's lungs, his chest will rise. After blowing the first breath, quickly break the seal and take another deep breath. Seal your mouth over the casualty's mouth again and blow. Administering the two full breaths should take about two to three seconds. After delivering your breaths, break the seal over the casualty's mouth and release their nose. This will allow the casualty's body to exhale naturally. If you cannot seal off the casualty's nose, or if the casualty has injuries to their mouth or jaw area that prevent you from administering mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation, administer mouth-to-nose resuscitation instead. Close the casualty's mouth so air will not escape. Seal your mouth over the casualty's nose and blow the two breaths into their nostrils. If the casualty begins breathing on their own, look for additional injuries. After treating the injuries, arrange for the casualty to be evacuated to a medical treatment facility. Do not leave the casualty alone since their breathing may stop again. The casualty may still require help to keep their airway open. If air goes in and out of the casualty's lungs but they do not start breathing on their own, check their pulse. If the casualty's chest did not rise and fall, then fresh air is not getting into the lungs. Try to open the casualty's airway more and administer two full breaths again. If the casualty's chest still does not rise, a foreign object is probably blocking their airway. Administer finger sweeps and manual thrusts as necessary to unblock the airway. Once the airway is unblocked, administer two full breaths again and constantly reevaluate. That concludes the lecture on airway management. Your tests are in front of you. When you're through, come up and see me to get your grade. Good job, soldier.